In this portion of the videos, we are reviewing the rules that allow you to determine or to make sure that the electron pushing arrows that you're drawing are good legal arrows. So remember that we're now at the point where we're trying to come up with the electron pushing arrows on our own. And it's important when you draw your own electron pushing arrows, it's important to draw a legal electron pushing arrow. So we're reviewing various uh, rules for making sure that your electron pushing arrow is legal. For example, we've already learned that you should never draw an arrow that indicates that you're taking a lone pair and moving it into a lone pair on a different atom. We've already seen that an arrow that indicates a lone pair to lone pair transition is always going to be incorrect. So then there are three types of arrows that could be correct. It's okay to move a pi bond into a lone pair. It's okay to move a lone pair into a pi bond. And it's okay to move a pi bond into another pi bond. The one thing you're not allowed to do is move a lone pair into a different lone pair. Uh, on the other hand, there are still some restrictions on these transitions too. There are still certain types of arrows of these types that would also not be good legal arrows. So now I want to go over one of those principles, which is, uh, we can call this the as close as possible principle the as close as possible principle. For example, if you are taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair, you have to put the lone pair as close as possible to the original pi bond. When you're moving a pi bond into a lone pair, you have to put that new lone pair as close as is possible to the original pi bond. Or, if you're taking a lone pair and making it into a pi bond, you have to make that new pi bond as close as is possible to the original lone pair. To repeat, if you're taking a lone pair and making it into a pi bond, the new pi bond has to be as close as is possible to the original lone pair. Or let's consider the third transition, where we take a pi bond and convert it into a different pi bond. Well, when you make this type of transition, the new pi bond has to be as close as possible to the original pi bond. The new pi bond has to be as close as possible to the original pi bond. You can see why we might call this the as close as possible principle. Let's look at some examples that might clarify this. Well, let's think about this electron pushing arrow and let's decide if it's consistent with the as close as possible rule. Well, notice that what we're doing is taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair. We know that we're doing that because the tail is pointing, uh, the tail is coming from the bond region. That means we're moving a pi bond and the head is pointing directly at the oxygen. That means we're making a lone pair. So we're going uh, from a pi bond to a lone pair. So we have to be putting the lone pair as close as is possible to the pi bond. Um, and we are. The, um, so if we took this pi bond and made a lone pair, well, the closest possible would be to put the lone pair on the oxygen or on the carbon. Those are the two things that are closest to this pi bond. And we are putting um, the lone pair as close as is possible because we're putting the lone pair on the oxygen. So this would be legal. How about this? Would this be as close as possible? Yes. So if we're taking this pi bond and making it into a lone pair, the closest possible places for the lone pair are either the oxygen or the carbon, because those are the atoms that were originally sharing that pi bond. So this would also be legal. Uh, by the way, it turns out that this would be a very insignificant resonance structure. So you usually wouldn't draw it. But our goal right now is not to cover all the different considerations for drawing electron pushing arrows. We just want to focus on this as close as possible rule. So even though this is not an arrow that you would usually draw for other reasons, um, it satisfies the as close as possible rule. This carbon uh, is, if we put the lone pair on the carbon, that would be as close as possible to the pi bond. So that, this arrow, satisfies the as close as possible rule. Now, how about this arrow? Does that satisfy as close as possible? I hope you give that some thought. Well, no, um, because again, we're taking a pi bond and making it into a lone pair, but now we're putting this lone pair all the way on this carbon. Well, that's not as close as we can get to the original pi bond. It would be better, uh, it would be closer to put the lone pair on this carbon or on this oxygen. Um, so this is not a good electron pushing error. That's not an electron pushing error that you'd want to draw in drawing resonance structures. So that's no, that's no good. 
So hopefully now it's, it's clear what I meant by the as close as possible rule. So do these arrows satisfy the as close as possible rule? Remember that I hope that every time I pose a problem, you'll pause the video and try the problem on your own. So I hope that you gave that a shot. Uh, well, this arrow is fine, because we're taking a pi bond and making the lone pair as close as possible to the original pi bond. We're putting the lone pair on the oxygen. But this arrow also indicates taking a pi bond and making a lone pair. We know we're making a lone pair because this head is pointing directly at this carbon. Uh, but the carbon is not the closest possible place we could put the lone pair. If we're going to take electrons out of this pi bond, the closest lone pair would be to put it on this carbon or this carbon. So this violates the as close as possible rule. So this is not a arrow that you'd want to draw in drawing resonance structures. So this is not a good way to try to um, get the resonance structures. How can I fix this arrow? Well, this would be okay. Now we're putting the lone pair on this carbon that really is as close as is possible to the pi bond. So this would be okay. Well, that would also be okay. So we can take this pi bond and put the lone pair on either of the two atoms that we're sharing that pi bond. By the way, again, actually, these two resonance arrows that I just drew would actually lead to fairly insignificant structures. Uh, but we don't want to really focus on that so much right now. We just want to learn about the as close as possible rule. So for this section of the video where I'm focusing on the as close as possible rule, um, we're not going to worry about whether the resonance arrows um, are giving us um, really interesting or significant uh, resonance structures um, all the time. We're just going to try to understand this one particular rule. We're going to try to eliminate the arrows that are not as close as possible and be satisfied with the arrows that are as close as possible. Even though sometimes an arrow that's as close as possible, we might want to reject that in real life for another reason. But we, we want to deal with one thing at a time here. Okay, well I think you can get the idea then that when you're forming a, lone, a pi bond into a lone pair, the lone pair should be on one of the atoms that was originally sharing the pi bond. That's as close as possible. When you're taking electrons out of a pi bond and moving them into a lone pair, the closest possible place to put the lone pair is on one of the two atoms that was originally sharing the pi bond. So if we take the electrons out of this pi bond, we want to put the lone pair on the oxygen or on the carbon. We wouldn't want to put it on any other atom because that would not be as close as possible to the original pi bond. Does this arrow satisfy the as close as possible principle? Well, now we're taking a lone pair and making it into a pi bond. The tail is on the negative charge, that means we're moving the lone pair, and the head is pointing to the bond region, so we're forming a pi bond. So we're thinking about the second case, taking a lone pair and making it into a pi bond. So the key is that the pi bond has to be as close as is possible to the original lone pair. Uh, well, this really is as close as is possible because this pi bond is still connected to the oxygen. So you couldn't get any closer to the oxygen because the pi bond will still be uh, shared by that oxygen. So this would satisfy the as close as possible rule. Do these arrows satisfy the as close as possible rule? Well, it should be pretty apparent that here we're taking this lone pair and making it into a pi bond that is not as close as possible to the original lone pair. Um, so here we're taking this lone pair and we'd be forming a pi bond down here, um, but it would be closer to the original lone pair to put the pi bond up here, like we were seeing in the previous example. So this is a good example of an arrow that violates the as close as possible rule. This arrow down here is fine. This arrow is as close as possible, but this is not a good place to put the new pi bond. It would be better instead Put the new pi bond over here, because that's closer to the original lone pair. So this arrow is bad, and this is a good as close as possible arrow.